you guys are may have noticed there's a little bit of a new look on some of this. is fine for this. I need to pick up my desk is dusty. And I clean my work area. Hmm. Sorry about this guys. Two videos in two days, what can I tell you? Good evening guys, Sunday evening here. Fickle paints. I didn't think I was gonna be coming on today because I spent a lot of time fudging around with my uh, my logo and stuff. You could see that over here. <laughs> I made three logos. That's not my favorite, but that's the one that won the votes. So I think I'm going to stick with that for now. If you want to have an opinion and if you think you like it or not, I sure would like to hear in the comments below. But today, these guys, I'm going to take these guys out and see if I can clean them up. They have been in this Drake, in, in this uh, stuff for weeks now. And I need to just get them out. I'm going to go for the easiest guy first, which is this goblin chef and his hatchet. And he has turned black. Now this is a metal mini and I did not expect it to turn black and that scares me a little bit. But let's see what happens when I throw the brush on him. I can see some of the black coming off, which is odd. I wouldn't expect that. Uh, this guy was obviously primed with uh, a water-based paint. And when I got him, I got him for free from the owner of the gaming shop I used to hang out at. And that gaming shop, unfortunately, is no longer with us, but uh, the owner is about there you go. He didn't want it. And I couldn't say no to a free mini. What can I tell you? You probably see my head there. But, uh, yeah. Oh, and probably my first, uh, oh, here comes my son. Give me one second, guys. Not really nothing on TV, so I figured I'd get ahead on some of this stuff that I haven't done in a while. Yeah, good games. Cool. This guy turned black. Oh yeah. Right. There was one play where like, I crossed him up and he, he like did a 360. Yeah. And then I did a Euro step around this other guy and bring him land on his map. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. I'm glad you had a good time. Sounds like you had a good Sunday today. Yeah. 
Nice. Nothing like having a good, good weekend. Yeah. Just gonna, this is probably the easiest one out of the bunch because this guy is was painted with water-based paint, while the other guys were painted back in the 80s with oil-based paint. So we'll see how that works out. Uh, surprisingly, this thing seems to have come in pieces and was glued together by the previous owner, which I can see back here. I'm not sure why you'd have to make this guy in parts, but there he is, in parts. And interesting. Maybe that black stuff is not the metal, maybe that's paint. I'm not sure. Let's see. if that liquid messes with the glue. Looks like it doesn't. And that's fine because I'll be able to work around that. No problem. This guy will be fine. Excuse me? I was wondering why my phone wasn't letting me use my fingers. <laughs> because there was a sweat drop in the middle. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, it messes up your phone when there's water on it, yep. Look. Nice. That's a target? Yeah. That's fine. That's cool, man. You didn't have to come back when I texted. I was just checking it no, out. No, no. I was, no, but I, no, I was saying that we already did. We were, like, she already got what she needed. Yeah. We were in the line at the yeah. Starbucks. She wanted to get a cake box. Alright, cool. She gets the chocolate ones too. Yeah. Mm, different strokes for different folks, man. It's funny because she said she hates the birthday cake one. Yeah. I almost walked out of the house around the face. Yeah. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I believe you. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. So, let's see if you guys can. Oh, see, from up there you can't see it. Let's see if I can. Let me guys out a little bit. Let me see if I can check this out. Oh, there you go. Is that better? You can see. I think that black Bro. is. Hey, can I you? We talk later. <laughs> you can tell me later. Jeez. What? No, no, man. I'm ignoring you for this, uh, for this web thing. That's true. I hate my life. There you go. See? So. I know that black stuff is coming off, but it is some kind of paint. I don't even know. A paint. I'm not sure now. What happens if I did this? I'd probably clean my brush more than more than anything else. I mean, looks like a good surface to paint on. I'm not gonna bother taking this. This is perfect. It's clean. This guy is also pretty darn good, but somehow the more I scrub him, the shinier he gets. Yeah, look at that. There we go. This is going to be a fun 
a fun little mini. Probably shouldn't use this for this. will be a fun little miniature painting. A lot of details in this backpack. I will set him aside. Over here. And we'll pull the next character up for bid. And it's going to be my favorite paladin for which I have a new sword to install. This guy was painted with testers paint back in the 80s. Looks like it's going to come off pretty good. Oh yeah, look at that. Put that in the water. And the reason I'm not scrubbing back and forth is because I kind of want to avoid getting this junk on my shirt. I want to have to invest in an apron for when I do this stuff. But this looks like it's working really well. Let's do something like that. There we go. There we go. I mean, Wow, that's impressive. So in Thinner, if you guys remember one of the other videos I had, when I did the Imperial Travel Marine little vignette, I put that guy in Thinner, lack of Thinner for, uh, I don't know, two weeks or a week, which softened up the paint but did not make it so that it could come off like the... Uh, this stuff does. This is a, uh, I keep forgetting the name, Simple Green. And I think I even diluted that Simple Green. Usually I don't dilute it. I should probably get some rubber gloves too. You usually don't want to handle this stuff with your bare hands. But I'm uh, an ignorant savage. Remember, this is the unprofessional paint channel too. So, But, uh, yeah, safety first, guys. Um, some good late. I'm gonna have to invest in some good latex gloves and uh, and an apron. I'm not gonna use the same apron that I cook in the kitchen with because I don't want to cross contaminate things. I don't know how many more minis I'll be stripping though, since I'm coming down to the end of my of the miniatures that I needed to finish when I was a kid, but this mini, this paladin was one of my favorites out of all the minis I had, and I even had him, it, it got to the point where I got to the end of where we stopped playing D&D, &D and we started playing Magic, and back then they had these counters, and you can glue whatever mini you wanted to your counter, and I had a white deck. So I had this guy glued to my life counter back then. So he got a lot of use, not only in RPGs, but in, in uh, playing Magic too. And, uh, well, you know, that sword sticking out like that, as flimsy as these pewter figures, because this is pewter, are soft metal. And, uh, it broke off, but now these guys at Chaos Wars, Ralpartha, are the best. I contacted them, and I was able to get from them. They gave me three extra swords. You know, I bought three swords from them that they had. That it looked nicer than the sword that he came with, and I'm going to have to, uh, I'm going to have to cut off the hilt on both ends and drill a hole through his fist and put the new sword in. At least that's my plan. Probably uh, probably easy to some of you uh, guys out there who do this a lot. I, I, it'll be one of the first times that I drill through a pewter mini. I've drilled through plastic minis, but not through pewter minis. Yes, my son has discovered the hairdryer. 
use it. Alright. So I kind of want to get this junk here. It just comes right off. I wonder if I can find... Oh, you know what? I'm going to get a toothpick. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Toothpick will be soft enough to not to damage the metal. Can you make more noise? Bro, I'm getting water. Relax. Bro. Soft enough to not damage the metal, but to scrape off the excess paint. That's working perfect. funny when you get this close to the, these old minis. I remember you, you, you get intimate with them as you work with them and you get to know every little nook and cranny. And this guy in particular is fun for me to get to know him again given that he was one of my favorite minis from way back when. So this is great. Now I just gotta make sure to get all this gunk out. Because if I leave it there, when I go to paint them again, it's gonna be a problem for the new paint to stick. If I've got the old paint loose beneath it, so. Look at that, coming right out. This is great news. And the toothpick being wood, as the end becomes frayed, it, I think it just makes for a better tool for me to get this paint out. This is just like I said to get to get those areas that okay I'm confused oh here it is that the toothbrush can't get right. look at that that will help to keep, to show more detail through the paint. I know that they they still make these guys over at Chaos Wars, Rel Partha, and you can pick one up. They recast them. I don't think they use the same pewter that this guy's cast in from way back when. I think nowadays they cast them in metal. You can see the remnants of the gold had a the gold axe. Yeah, it's gold hilt. I look forward to repainting this guy and I'll probably keep the same paint job. Same white, red, classic, classic uh, Templar type paint job. I just love this guy. Got some red here and the, the feathers need to come out. This looks good. And me, I'm sure that these guys are fine, these metal guys that I'm stripping. But in my head, the goal will be to get them sealed and primer right away to avoid any unnecessary oxidation. I this is just a personal thing. I don't think that's a worry I need to have at this moment. And it's not has anything to do with this process, as far as I can tell. But just for my peace of mind, 
if I can get them all sealed. Where did I put the uh, that goblin? Oh, right here. Oh, there he is. There he is. Where's his arm? Oh, there he is. Yeah, so uh, it's funny because I don't think the goblin is pewter. He's got different colors. That's interesting. His arm goes in here. Oh, he's like attacking or, or, or upset. Yeah, I was going to put his arm down here. This is kind of like, he's almost like a pack mule, if you ask me, with all the stuff he's got. And his backpack. I'll figure out a post for him after the fact. There, this is how it goes there. There goes my relic for it. What year is this? Did it say? It does not say the piece of super glue down there. This guy. Is that lead rot? No. I refuse to believe that it's lead rot. What I will do. Never needed it before. This guy will be fine. Oh, I got more junk here to take out. So, I mean, if you're stripping your mini and there's paint that stays. I've got some paint here that's not leaving. I don't know if you can see it in the deepest, darkest recesses. And you're not going to be able to see that once I primer it and paint it. It's going to be gone. But I do want it out because it will maximize how much detail comes through the paint job. So that's important. I see there's a big mold line in this shield that I never addressed before. And I never even saw through the other paint, but now that I'm here. Good as it gets right there. Oh, I just realized. But I'm going to have to drill this guy out before I. Start primering, primering and painting them. Well, I mean, I could do it after I primer them, but still got some guck in his eyeball here. I think. There we go. Wow, uncovered after 40 years. Paladin. Knight Templar. What do we got next? Next we're going to go and see 
We're going to take this Ralpartha Archangel. I had lost the wings for it. And again, Ralpartha and the guys over at Chaos Wars had what I needed. Look at the paint came right off. I should just wipe that off. This nice, giant, smooth shield. Yeah, boom. That is awesome. I bet you a lot of this stuff will come right off just like that. Gold hair I'd painted back when I was a kid. <coughs> you know, gold paint for the gold hair. And now this all needs to come off. So I can redo this Archangel. Get those wings on them. Him or her, I think it's a her. In my mind, it's a her, I think. It can really go either way for this guy. And put this in here. Put it here, do something like this. Get this off. Get some in here, right here. This is big stuff here. Okay, I was gonna say I was surprised this white stuff didn't come up sooner because it seems the white the white paint just comes right off. Metallic paint seems to just kind of disintegrate, but the gold on her hair, or his hair, seems to be sticking pretty good. Let me see if I do something like this. Yeah, look at that. Uh-oh. Stand back. That's what I was talking about, these particulate. Uh, I need a fresh toothpick here to help this stuff along. And I'm out of simple green, so and I think I water either I watered it down or that simple green changed color from these guys being in there for so long. It's one of those two. But uh, it's starting to come together. There you go. Put this guy here. Yeah, there you go. Look at that. That's what it is. The paint that's been on there for 30 some odd years. Who knows, maybe I should throw it in thinner again for a while. There's that messed up toothpick. Here you go. You can use the frayed end of the toothpick to get this stuff off. There you go. Gotta go with with the sculpt. To knock this stuff off. I think this stuff has been in there for like two or three weeks, maybe three weeks. So it should have come just right off. So, but again, it's it's enamel. It's not water based. It's not the Citadel stuff. This is the old uh, testers and Tamaya enamel paint. So it's like a whole other. bonding to the surface. That's a good thing about, I mean back then I didn't prime anything. I just painted right onto the metal and had no problems with that either. Um, I don't know if anybody else did that back then. That's just what I did. That sword's going to break so I'm going to keep bending it and straightening it out. And I'm not going to be happy. Let's see. Look at that. Hmm. Yeah, I mean I could have just gotten another Archangel since they do make them still apparently but something ab about re-fixing up 
my original mini that I bought way back when I was a kid that I got in the mail you know and I think like this mini being so old it's that much closer to being you know the original sculpt because I don't know if they use the same molds now as they did back then or if they had to remake the molds which from what I gather it happens a lot because you can only make so many minis from each mold so after they make one they have to recast the mold to recast the minis and start over again so it's been 40 years of recasting yeah look at that let me get one of the sharper points here and see if I can get in that little nook, nook or cranny what is the difference between a nook and a cranny anybody know anybody want to help me out with that I have to call the people over it. Look at that discoloration. There's multiple. This is almost like from heat. I don't know how that works. I don't know how that works, but look at that. Boom. 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 Yeah, this if it wasn't for this toothpick, I I don't know what I was gonna do with this guy. Yeah, I can see that I'm probably going to put this back in again to get more of this paint off. But while I'm here. Yeah, I couldn't do this with the knife. If I did this with that exacto knife, I'd be destroying all the detail on the sculpt, and that would not be a good thing. The toothpick is awesome because it's not, it's hard enough to push the paint off, but not hard enough to damage the details on the sculpt. So, very happy with this idea. Of mine. I'm sure somebody else has thought of it before me, but uh, hey, here we are, figuring things out as we go. I kind of have an idea to put a diorama together. I think I will swallow it with the Archangel and the Paladin, because I won't be using these guys to play now. Now I just paint them up and put them in a display. So. Kind of like my Imperial Trooper, I did the same thing. He's up in a display now. My goodness. I'm surprised that this paint is so difficult to get off. No, I'm not. I said earlier it was going to be difficult. Uh, it's just, uh, I guess it just depends on the mini and the paint. Oh, this is the spot where the glue is for the wings. Some old. deadly tool
have to be very careful because at this point the pewter is softer than the glue that I've used to put them those old wings on plus I don't want to mess up that angelic face I don't know if you can see it That's right around here let me see if this helps where's my mouse this might actually work nope not really So I don't want to use these hard tools to scrape the paint off, but for the purposes of getting this old super glue off, yeah. But I gotta be careful not to use it, the metal parts as leverage. I'm wondering if I cut away at the glue. That allow me to crack it. Again, I'll be able to work around it. Let me just move on to the paint again. Keep trying to get this paint off. What's the point of this? Look at that. Mm. Yep, that came right out. And boom. Nice. I think I remember this white is that I used was a Tamaya enamel. I had switched towards the end of my mini painting days as a kid from from uh, testers to Tamaya. I just found them back then to be a superior paint, and so naturally when I started painting again as an adult. First, again, I could only find testers because I didn't know where to look for these guys. But it was not what I needed. And then I found Tamaya, but Tamaya, at least the ones that I found, were solvent based. So it's a whole other. Well, not a whole other. It's a, it's a different thing to deal with. They were solvent based. Um, I still use them because I have them, but I don't plan on replacing them. However, if Tamaya has uh, water-based acrylics, which I believe they do, and I believe I can get them locally, I will look into using those. As long as they're not, they don't require a special thinner or anything like that. Because the other cool thing about using these water-based paints is that I can do what I'm doing now with just water. I don't have to spend money on any other chemicals to uh, to do what I need to do to these guys. So I might be a little picky on what I'm trying to do, but I just yeah, look at that. Yeah, at this point, this needs to come out. Because it's loose enough to where it's not loose enough to just fall off, but it's loose enough to where it would be an issue if I were to paint over it at this point. So, so I'm gonna do that like that. Get some of this paint off her neck. I want to say this is a she. I could be wrong. Well, I mean, I hear that the angels are actually 
asexual, non-binary, I don't know what the term is. I'm still learning about that stuff, but, but this one looks like a, well, maybe actually it looks androgynous, that's the word I'm looking for. This is an androgynous archangel, super cool. The sleeves are really stuck on. I don't think the toothbrush will do the job here. Yeah, you know, nothing's happening with the toothbrush. This is why you gotta replace your toothbrush, kids. Because after a while, they just don't do anything. Look at that. smooth painted surface to a surface covered in paint grit. There we go. There we go. There we go. Now this sculpt you know, I need to start looking at the history of these guys before I start turning on the uh, the Twitch, because I know that the sculptor for this is a famous one. I don't know if it's Tom Muir. I, I know that he, this particular sculpt has a definite Royal Partha look to it, especially in the face. Very reminiscent of the owls that I used to get from Royal Partha. I have a whole set of those guys in the box. I'm not too worried about the gold and the hair staying because I will probably paint her hair gold again. Or his hair gold. The, the hair gold. And then here we got a flesh tone underneath the fists. The shield arm. Do I have a better toothpick? I do. Look at that. Yeah, the paint is coming off. It's, it's turned into a guck, is what it's done. So it's not just flaking off. You gotta scrape it off here, which is unfortunate for me. this guy off. Look at that. Well, this is this is giving me this trouble for after three weeks in simple green. So 
some other guys in the group I'm in talk about this purple liquid I'm not sure which one it is I know I'm not gonna get my toothpick in there am I? oh look I did Yeah, my toothbrush was not going to get into this spot at all. Well, I can imagine him carving these details, these deep details in here with the tiniest of tools that I don't happen to have. I do have a tiny screwdriver I might be able to use way down in here and again I don't want to use this a lot because it will damage the surface of the how the heck did I do this this is totally sure how that happened but I ain't putting that back in there again. This is gonna go like this. Upside down. It's gonna go over here. If I had a needle. So I don't wanna like I said I don't want to damage this guy so I gotta kind of just run it smoothly along the surface and pull out the loose paint like this. I don't even know if you can see what I'm doing. So look, this is where the toothpick could not get in. But my little screwdriver got in. I can get the flakes of paint out of here. Because now it's a matter of getting a right surface for my new paint so that my new paint doesn't fall off. Otherwise, I'll be painting this guy for a third time later. This is the paper that was stuck to it. I could see that I gooped the old paint on here and, and filled in detail that could otherwise have been seen way back when but I didn't know that back then Look at this. There you go. Alright. Cut those tiny bits of paint out of these tiny little holes. Sorry if I'm not looking at the chat window, I will look at it in a moment. Yep. 
It's like once you catch the edge of the paint flake, it just comes right off. That's a lot of tedious work here. But this kind of stuff I enjoy. Usually I don't talk while I'm doing this. Uh, I usually don't talk at all when I'm painting. But I started this channel with these videos so that it kind of makes me dedicate time to it in an effort to get to my goal of finishing all my old childhood minis. Of course, I have fallen into the trap that many other collectors have fallen into where they get new minis to paint before they're done painting the minis they've got. And oddly enough, in my case, it's not so much about the ones I bought as much as the ones I've been given. <laughs> you know, this mold line can come out with the, with the nail file. It's funny, I think I used the paint back then to fill in the difference in height of the surface. So I got rid of something that I needed, which is rare. It's better than it was, but I'm gonna keep trying to get the paint off. Let me dip them in the water. Yeah, take some of the flakes off. It does take some of the flakes off. So in a machine shop or in a mechanic shop when we're cleaning we have like a, a sink that pours detail de and junk right on the part and we get a wire brush and clean off uh, all the grime off of parts of the car but I can't do that A for two reasons A I'm in my house and that's toxic stuff and B uh, wire brush would totally destroy this mini. Uh, it is pretty good right now though, I gotta tell you. I've come a long ways from where I started just a minute ago. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, this comes right so I'm just coming right off there. Got a big piece here that I can drag across the surface without damaging the surface. Just takes the paint right off. Perfect. This is a whole crevice that I've just cleared of paint. I 
gotta say though, it is a relief to finally get to paint some good guys. I painted a bunch of skeletons before I started this channel. And you see them in the the banner, I believe. Um, and then before that, I had painted some space orcs. So just getting back to some some good guys, some fantasy good guys. It's just a treat for me. And I think at some point I want to build a Rao Partha Elven army. Uh, I, oh, actually, there's just so many things I want to do. Uh, there's, I think it's Other World Minis. And they have miniatures for the old D&D cartoon from Saturday morning. And that is like high on my list. And of course, the nostalgia level for me is incredible. So I can't wait to get to that. I don't know when that will be. But like I said, it's high on my list. This paint is not coming up. Oh, here we go. safer with the toothbrush. I mean, well, toothbrush and toothpick. But, uh, not working with those items, so I had to pull out this big gun. And this guy's working great. Maybe too good. But the thing is, even though that's a, a, a mold scene, it for me it's like part of the armor. I don't know how to explain it. It just seems like a cool part of there be where there would be a seam in the armor for them to put it on. So it's not I'm not too worried about the mold lines on this figure. Only probably because they place them in such a great place. It just for me doesn't uh, doesn't bother me too much. It might bother some of the other guys I've seen online. Apparently there's some tool out there that people use to get rid of mold lines. I have not seen it. I will invest in one at some point. I think this is as good as it's going to get for this many. I think it's, it's at a point that I can Sorry. But there we go. It's just it's always the same. Just when you think you finished something, you find something else that you can do on it. And so you move in and do it. 
and that's okay. So you gotta go back to the toothpick here. Yeah, that's working. That's working. Third figure. The other two figures came out came out quite easy. But this one's got a lot of nooks and crannies, so it took a while. And I'm thinking about dropping it back in there. I also think what I need to do is straighten out this edge. Yeah, this metal is so soft. I could do one whole video just taking scraping paint off of this guy. What do you guys think of that? Crazy, right? Nah, it ain't gonna happen though. I will. Oh, see? Now that I fixed the tool, I get into some spots I could not get into a minute ago. couldn't get out earlier. It's a loose flake that will be totally terrible for any paint that comes on after. But I can do this. by straining out this uh, screwdriver. Happier now with how this is working out. These flowing garments. 
that are a major part of this sculpt. And if they don't catch those details, I'm afraid it'll look terrible. But the fact that I'm able to clean so much of this paint off in this way is a big deal. difficult work will give you greater satisfaction when completed, especially if completed properly. Right. So today we're just taking paint off. We're not putting paint on today, we're taking it off. And look at that, boom. I think you can use a toothpick on here. I mean, was it Rembrandt? He had a sculpt with flowing robes or cloth over the face of a woman. I mean, this is not a Rembrandt, but this is for sure a classic mini. And I am happy to have the wings for it again. I'll pull out the wings real quick. So you guys can get a quick look. You see the difference in the metal and the new stuff and the old stuff? The new stuff, I don't think that's not pewter. I don't think that's pewter. Whoops, I lost my sword. I still have that glue back there that I couldn't get off, but I think, yeah, it's not going to be an issue based on what I can see. Yeah, it goes right there. Is it going to be an issue? No. Nah. That's it. That's my Archangel. From back in the 80s, without paint again after so many years. Incredible. And I'm gonna put him on a, I'm gonna do a little diorama with the Paladin and my Archangel or a vignette I guess is really what it's going to be and it's going to be fantastic at least I think alright so we got this guy mostly done Up. 
this spot here. I just want to get this one spot that I am perplexed at cleaned because I want to understand it. Because the way it's registering now, I'm not understanding it. Some strange fold in the fabric here. It's a fold within a fold. I gotta pay some special attention to it. And somehow I have got super glue on the bottom of this guy. That's not gonna mess me up. I think I figured out that piece I told you about here. It's a piece of fabric inside of another piece of fabric. Another piece of this paint right here. I think. something so back in the 80s I mounted this guy on a piece of cardboard so we used to cut cardboard in one inch squares so when we played D&D our little guys would fit right on the one inch square. And so this is the remnants of that glue and that white cardboard that we mounted it on. Which I gotta say held up pretty good in that bath. And it doesn't mess up the standing of it, so I'm not gonna fool with it. Smoother now than it was before. I wonder if I were to take this guy and this guy. See what I'm doing? I'm filling that gap with liquid green stuff. I think that will do a trick. Once it dries, I can sand that smooth again. Just thought about that right now. For now, he may not be done, but he's done for now. I think I need new paper towels. And I'm gonna need a new working surface. So this is my. This is making me decide to buy one of those green working surfaces because I'm very afraid now of what my desk looks like underneath there. Right back with some paper towels, guys. Hold on.
All right. Next is a right. Oh no. The shield for my Rowan Rider should be quick and easy. Yeah. I might even be able to just wipe it off. Yeah. Awesome. If you guys don't remember, I had a Rowan Rider from Mithril Metals, Mithril Minis, that they don't make anymore. And I got the new horse for him. And this is his shield that I painted oh so many years ago. these nicks in the shield on purpose I kind of regret it now but uh, hey you know it's part of the life of this mini it's what I did I'll put some green oh great and that's why I need a you know, how come I didn't think about doing that with the uh, with the angel I think this is gonna come out. Nope. And this is glue. I think glue's coming right off. That's good news. Something you don't want to do, guys. Just poke yourself in the finger. Yeah, I'm being a little rougher with this guy than I am than I was with the angel. Cause I'm not too worried about the back end of this shield. Cause I know it won't be seen. Where's that guy? That's this guy. So basically we have a table full of salvaged minis, guys. And this shield goes right on his arm. Like this. Which is going to be interesting. Because once I mount him, it'll look like, yeah, that's going to look nice. Look at that. Okay. Beautimus. Beauty Mus. Where's that little guy? fella. I need to do something about this. ASAP, no Rocky. I, that's, I heard that from somewhere. Where's my tunnel? It's alright. I'm not sure why I put this guy in here, but I did. So, it's too late now. I'm going to repaint him. This is a Ralph Partha horse, I believe. Yes, 1979. I probably got it around 1979, maybe 1980. Uh, I'm surprised the paint has come off so easily so far. 
Again, I did paint this with enamel back in the 80s. So, there's that. Remember guys, circles. Yeah. Both sides the same, looks like it. One side easier to get off than the other, I don't know. I think this one side is easier than the other side. The other side came off easier. I'm gonna use so I'll be surprised if the paint comes off the saddle because that's where the glue is from where the rider was. I was informed that the rider I have on this horse is not the correct rider for this horse, but it works, and so he's going to get to keep his horse. Now, I don't know what's going on here, seems like there's, yeah, it was just some paint. It was acting tough. Huh. What if I do this? Then it's the same but with suds. Alright. What if I do this? Yeah, it's not coming off on this side. Oh, and that's going to be tough. Right under there. Right in the horse's chest. Could that be? So it's funny, this side came off great. What is the difference between sides? I do not know. Should have all been the same. Horse butt. Horse butt. Basically we're just dragging a pin to the, the toothpick over the surface, just like the angel. And it's probably the same paint too that I used for the angel that I used for this horse way back when because they were painted around the same time. So whatever paint that was, like I said, I think was Tamaya for me back then. Tamaya, testers, all those oil based paints from the 80s. I do not recommend using them for this nowadays. Get yourself some nice water-based paints. You know, smell. This green, simple green stuff smells. It's supposed to be uh, organic or natural or something, but I can't really stand the smell of it either. I'm gonna put a lid on it as a matter of fact. might drop the Archangel and this horse back in the vat for another while.
Toothpick pretty well. Right. Now I realize that this takes a long, a long process for you guys to watch me do on camera. So I fully expect for you to speed things up if you watch this after I've posted it later. Makes total sense to me. As a matter of fact, I recommend it. Um, no need to watch me in regular mo if you can get me in fast mo. And by mo I mean motion. And typical Ralph Partha, he has sculpted the horse's wee wee. So, if we weren't sure about the Archangel, we can be sure about this horse. That's for sure. come off completely on one side of this horse and not on the other I could not tell you it's a shame that it didn't come off evenly all over because that would have made life a lot easier oh my goodness I didn't bother to scrub the base I'm not too worried about the base really Flashing from 1979 that I never cut off. I really like that. What a bad model maker. I actually won a prize in the youth fair way back when I was a kid. The Panzer 5 tank was my favorite model I'd ever built. I put a lot of time and effort into it and the details. I, uh, I uh, even had a a frame diorama with a guy walking next to it just like it wasn't even a battle it was just like a between battles or on the way to the war zone or whatever walking and uh, that poor model succumbed to the ravages of my two little brothers I came home one day from school to find it in pieces on the floor of my room I was so upset. Nowadays, well, I'd still be upset, but I probably would have tried to figure out a way to put it back together. But that wasn't me back then. I was building models, but I wasn't that patient to put something I'd already done once and do it again so I'm not certain why I paint 
paint that's not coming off this horse. Other than it's really old enamel. It's metal, so it won't, it's not going to mess it up if it goes back in. Let's take a look at the old 1979 Ralpartha horse and compare the size to the new Ralpartha horse that I got the other day. I was kind of confused as to why such a difference. And yeah, this new horse is smaller. It's obviously a different scale. That's just the only thing I can think of. Um, just out of, just for giggles, let me check something out. Yeah, this guy's too big for this. But, I had, like, a peasant archer. Don't even know, I don't remember where I got him from. And he was the guy that I put on that horse. Watch this, it's gonna come right off, yep. circles again. It's amazing, what a difference. This guy wasn't even painted that bad. I just, I don't know, I just want to re, redo him. I never even realized that he had this padded armor. At least I didn't remember it as padded. But you know what, now that I look at it, it reminds me of my friend Alex, who is an archer with the SEA, and his suit is very similar to this one. His costume. Costume slash uniform. Look at that. Look at that stuff, comes right off. See, this guy looks perfect on here, but it's funny because this is an English archer and this is totally not an English horse. But they work. They work uh, good. And so they will stay together. Let's see if I can get those eyes cleaned up. Because I'm going to try and paint some eyeballs on this guy on this second go around.
guy. You know, in Excalibur, the movie, when King Arthur, well, before he comes king, he goes with his dad and his brother to the uh, event to see who can pull the sword out. And this is pretty much what he's wearing in that scene. He's wearing like a padded leather vest with some pants. Doesn't have the hat, but uh, it's pretty darn close. I think that's why I like this guy, because it's one of the few normal people I have as a mini. He's not a. Uh, he doesn't seem to be. A great hero, and if he is, he's a he's a sleeper, right? He doesn't care about what he looks like. He looks like a normal, just like everybody else, which is probably one of the best heroes out there. He's your everyday man, doing what he's supposed to be doing. In this case, probably for God and country, or for his kids, or whatever. Get rid of that paint there. Get rid of this paint in here. I can't believe that this is the tool that I ended up using to get rid of the paint. So, and then here, this paint. As far as the back of his head is, I can't get to the back of his head. With that, let's see what I can do with this. And again, I never back then I would not prime anything, I just paint right on the middle, which is what you see me removing here. So, this is just metal, and it's interesting. This particular model, you see the other one's kind of went a little dark. Well, actually, now that it dried, it's lightened up a little bit. different the paint job's going to be when I'm done. That's the funny part because it might look exactly the same as he did when I painted him 30 years ago. I'll find out I guess in a minute or when I get to him. That's one, two, three, four, five, five miniatures. Plenty of six count the Rider of Rowan, which we should count, and uh, let me try and get some of this paint off his eyeballs, because I do want to paint the eyes on this guy, but I don't want to mess up his face with this hard edge. I've made a big mess here today, let me tell you, with all these little paint flecks. That's okay, I got a Roomba to pick them up. Guys, this is... Oh, not yet. Almost. Let me get under here. I can get this little bit out. I think we're wrapping up our paint stripping session for today. I think it's been a success. I might dip them again. I don't know. I think um, I think she will work as is now, the way she is. For the horse, not so much. But if I put one back in again, I might as well throw the other, so. We'll 
See how that works out. This is here is glue. Oh, perfect. Chipped right off. Because that glue should chip right off because it's glued onto paint. So the only thing really huh, holding it to the mini is the paint that's holding the glue on. There we go. That's great. That worked. So let's take a quick look at what we have done today. I'm not putting this guy back in there. He's going to have to go here. These two can go back in the jar. This can go in the jar. This can I'm going to close this guy. I might use it later. And then pull this group. This just means that next time you, I come to paint, I'm going to have a new uh, cardboard set up here. Alright, let's, uh, let's take a quick look at what we got. with our horse stripped you guys remember what they look like when we started this one may need some more work but he's way better than what he was a minute ago I think I'm gonna try and take the uh, super glue on his base off I, I, it shouldn't matter for me because I'm gonna put them on two by one inch bases anyways that stuff came right off. Raul Partha, 1979. This is not a Raul Partha, but the horse and the rider, in my mind, match great. And so, and they've been together for so long that this this is just for me a natural way to go for him. That's awesome. So we got this guy. We got. The goblin. Where is his hand? Did I lose his hand again, guys? There he is. You heard of the goblin cleaver? Well, this is the goblin with a cleaver. And for me, in my head, this guy is a perfect, not just a chef. I'm going to figure out how this arm is supposed to go on because it's just not. It seems like it's supposed to go something like this. Uh, I don't know. I don't, I, don't, I don't see him as a threatening goblin, but that extended arm is kind of threatening unless I raise it like this. Is that what it's supposed to do? Yeah. That looks like an angry goblin like that. So yeah, you heard of the goblin cleaver. Here's the goblin with the cleaver. Right? Which is hilarious and awesome. I think he will have his arm up in the air. He's not a happy fellow. I feel like I should primer this guy like super quick because I don't understand this discoloration uh, on this piece. But should not be an issue. We've got our Archangel from the 19... Is this dry? Looks dry. Let's give it a quick hit with the... I think that did the trick, guys. It's a lot better than what it was. Can probably use another hit of green stuff. Yeah. Yeah, another hit of 
great stuff. Uh, also, let's see, this is our Archangel. I've got some glue in there. I don't know if I can get it out. I think I'm going to do this. Let's see if this works. No. Nope. nope. What about this? Will this work? It did. And it was not as bad as I thought it would be, which means I'm willing to do this then. Oh, it almost hit me in the eyeball. So we're getting to a point where I don't know the difference between glue and metal back here but as far as I can tell now I know these are the right wings because these are the wings they are the same exact wings I had back in the day There is our Archangel, who is going to need some blue stuff, some green stuff, like some, what do they call it? I'm going to need to do some green stuff work back here. That's just my feeling from what I'm seeing. Oh, maybe not. I just, I think I might have found something. And then last but not least, my one of my favorite minis of all time is my, I think my number two mini. My number one mini is my mounted elf, which was my first player character in Dungeons and Dragons. And this then, this is number two, which is just this standalone paladin slash templar adventure type. I love him. Full chain mail, he's got his adventure gear, he's got an ax. You know, more like a tool than a weapon. Just everything. He's got everything. My hands are full of great junk. I need to get them washed and cleaned. And and then just to reiterate, we got our rider of Rohan with the horse that we got. A used horse. He's got a used horse. And his new shield. His new old shield. Where's the shield? Here he is. That's not the shield. This is the shield right here. And that's going to look freaking awesome. A lot of dynamic energy in this mini. It's a lot of motion. It's going to be nice. It's going to be interesting to see how it's come together. I'm very excited for this guy. And then, as a reminder, if you've been watching all of these videos, the next guy on the table is this guy which I stripped him a while back and already did the uh, primer, priming for. So once he gets done, I'm going to move on to my Rowan Rider. And then we'll just go from there. So that's it for tonight, guys. I'm glad to have been able to post a couple of videos together today. And I um, hope you guys are hobbying and doing well. And I um, hope you have a great week. And I'll come back as soon as I can. Ciao.